Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Adana Yaz and today we will be shedding some light on oral presentations to find out what oral presentations are. Let's move on to the topic. So the things the we are going to cover today will be defining oral presentations, their types and the elements to consider, process of presentations, and seven key factors to remember while delivering oral presentations. So let's have a look at them at one by one. First comes here is the definition of oral presentation. So the action of uh, communication in which one speaker is doing the most of the sending and a number of listeners are doing most of the receiving part. Okay, so there is a person who's speaking and there are other people maybe there is the audience who are listening that's what we call a presentation or oral presentation now moving on to the types so there are majorly primarily there are four categories four types and number one is prepared speeches or extemporaneous speeches or maybe presentations reading or manuscripts and number three memorization or the speeches which are actually memorized. And number four comes impromptu speeches. So let's have a look at them one by one. First comes ex uh, this extemporaneous presentations or speeches. They may also be called as uh, prepared speeches as we have actually had a name previously. So they say an extemporaneous speech is one where you will have time for preparation and practice, but you will not be expected to read from a manuscript or to have the speech memorized. So you don't need to memorize the speech here and you won't even be allowed to read the manuscript continually or continuously. So you may have some uh, cue cards with you to hint you out about what you have to talk and about the points that you have to keep talking about one by one. So here, this is what we call extemporaneous speech or presentation. Moving to the number two, which is memorized presentation. So I think that's very much clear that there are the presentation or the speeches which you fully memorize word by word. You don't really need to, uh, you don't have to, you know, look at any card or anything or any presentation on any visuals or something. All you need to do is just memorize and then deliver. So they can be sometimes very dangerous as well. Uh, dangerous in a sense, like they could be, if you forget a word or something, they may be, uh, uh, they might ruin your whole presentation or a speech. Number next is manuscript presentations. So manuscript presentation are the, are the word for word pres um, iteration, iteration of uh, written messages. I mean, their recitation or reading of word for word, each and everything that is written there, you're going to read it. So in a manuscript presentation, the speaker maintains their attention on the printed page, except when using visual aids. The advantage of reading from a manuscript is that the exact repetition of original words. Okay, so you just have to read whatever it, it is written, whatever is written on the on the on the you know paper or whatever you're reading it from that's what we call manuscript presentations you don't have to do any any more efforts regarding uh, delivering the presentations so that's what it is and the last one we have got number four which is impromptu speeches or impromptu presentations they are speaking in as uh, impromptu speaking is a speech that a person delivers without predetermination or preparation so there is no preparation time there you just have to speak at the spot the speaker is most commonly provided with their topic in the form of a quotation but the topic may also be presented as an object proverb one word abstract or one of the many alternatives possibilities so it could be at the spot topic and you will have to start talking about it and that's what we call impromptu speeches so these are the four kinds. Now moving on to elements that you need to consider and before, you know, before delivering those presentations. So there's the venue thing, the place, actually the organizers, the occasion, 
the time available, what, what kind of time, whether there is a time or not, the other speakers, if there are, and the audience. So let's have a, a look and now at the process of this uh, preparing those oral presentations or speeches. So number comes planning, then comes preparing, I like preparing and writing. And number three is delivering or completing. Let's have a look at them one by one. Well, planning talks about determine the purpose. And now what, what is your purpose? It could be either to inform, persuade, motivate, or to entertain the people. Sometimes it could be all of them or, and well, some other occasions, it could be either two or one of them. Then comes the audience analysis. They say determine the audience's size and composition. Predict audience's probable reaction, how they are going to react, just try to imagine that. And estimate audience level of understanding, how good they are at understanding what you are going to, or to, what you are about to deliver to them. Then comes the preparation part, or maybe the, uh, yeah, of course, the writing part. So ma main idea or the content, which is actually the, what is the idea that you would like to share with them. Then comes limit your scope, make sure that you stick to your idea. Then select your approach. What kind of approach are you going to use while delivering the message or whatever the idea you have? So we have already discussed about those five approaches, four, rather four approaches. Could be impromptu, maybe a reading, which is actually manuscript kind of uh, presentation. And then we also talked about extemporaneous species. So uh, you, the, make sure what approach you are gonna use. Then they say prepare an outline as we did in the starting of the lecture, and then develop your presentation. And I'll start working on your presentation, how to go for the body and make sure you have the introduction part first and then the body and then the conclusion. It's just similar to writing an essay. Moving on to the third part, which is delivering and the most important part, which is uh, completing. So oral delivery, make sure you have a very audible voice. Your volume is uh, uh, loud enough that everybody can hear you and make sure the rate of your, your speech or presentation is easily understandable. Vocal quality, uh, either you are loud enough, whether you know, if you're using a microphone or a speaker or something, make sure that it is accurate enough and it is of um, a proper quality. And then pronunciation, whether you're able to pronounce the words clearly, I mean, your pronunciation may not be a problem for the, read for the readers or listeners rather to understand what you are actually aiming at. So that's the three process, three things that are required to make sure before delivering a presentation. So let's move on to nonverbal delivery. Now, another part which is more important which is nonverbal delivery. It's posture, movement, gestures, facial expressions, and appearance. So as we uh, we have another videos and we talked and we talked about uh, two types of communication. So this is another important element that we have previously discussed as well, and it is a very important and pivotal that you understand what nonverbal and how significant it is to use nonverbal language while you are communicating with the people. So these are the, the elements, these are the, the important features that you must continue, you must focus when you are delivering the presentations. Postures, how you stand, movement, gestures, facial expressions and appearances. That's what they are. Now, moving on to the next one, seven factors to remember before you actually go for the, you know, delivering presentation. So if you make a mistake, number one is the start. Okay, do not apologize, be confident and know the topic well. Number two would be to talk about the audience mood. I mean, I really don't mean to talk about them, but it's about the audience mood. So be emphatic with your audience's mood. Watch your audience's body language, their facial expressions, glances, exchange, shuffling of feet, EDC, etc., etc. Project the right degree of formality. Use good pace and drive. Don't be arrogant. This will turn your audience against you. Control your enthusiasm. Okay, if you're very much enthusiastic, make sure you're controlling it. 
Number three, your voice. Be clearly audible. Use microphone if necessary. Keep your head up. Open your mouth wider than during normal speech. Of course, here you need to speak a little louder, so make sure your voice, your mouth is uh, wider than normal. Speak competitively, slow to the audience that they may be able to digest what you're saying. Keep the right level of stress, accent, and speed of speaking. That's another very important element. Use a good pitch, uh, like the musical tone, vary it. High notes convey urgency. The low notes convey emphasis. So make sure your pitch is actually normal. I mean, it has an intonation in it. It has a fall, rise, and fall in it. Moving on to number four, body language. Position of, positioning of your body, stand in a good posture. Do not pace around too much. Use your hands in proper gestures to support your point. Good use of eye contact gains you and holds attention and establishes your repo. Avoid mannerism that irritate. For example, swaying side to side, fiddling with marker, and fidgeting with fingers, swirling to and fro. Avoid hands in pockets. Yes, many people would do that. They put their hand in the pocket and they start delivering the speeches. It's an awkward way of doing that. Number five would be use your, your visual aids. When using flip charts or whiteboards, write from right from the right side. From the side, I mean, start writing from the side, from a side, actually. I mean, don't go right in the middle and start writing from the middle now. That would be good. That wouldn't be actually appreciable. Write legibly, like write in a way that everybody can understand it, neat and clean. Stand so that you do not block the view of the screen. Do not speak to the board or screen, okay? You face the audience. That's what they mean. Number seven, six would be timing. Make sure you end on time. Of course, some people may go beyond the time and which is actually a... Uh, a bad impression of your speech that you could not have, you do not have a proper time management of your speech. Observe the division of time from in the introduction to the body and to the conclusion. So make sure there is a time division about whatever the presentation you're delivering. So you should be actually setting goals, setting a proper time for introduction, body, and conclusion. And make sure you practice again and again, and then so that you are, uh, so that you finish your presentation on time. Then we have number seven, which is conclusion. Finish with equal enthusiasm as was on the start, okay? Some people may have a very good enthusiasm at the start, and but in the end, they are just very low, uh, with you know their voice is low and you know they shake you and some kind of that thing so ask the audience for action okay well that's uh, some kind of thing we normally do so state in the last in the conclusion what you want the audience to do what is it the audience should do after listening to your message uh, or to your presentation leave no doubt in your audience's mind that you have come to an end of your presentation like it should not be a quick ending a hasty ending or sudden ending rather some people may tend to do that some people tend to do that they had they go for the ending and say thank you very much and uh, everybody is just in a shock okay so he has actually finished his presentation or not so make sure that you uh, move smoothly towards the ending so that everybody moves towards the ending along with you so that's three that's seven things okay and they say last but not the least which is very important message for you there are no secrets to success it is the result of preparation hard work and learning from failure of course the most important part is here they need to prepare a lot a lot you know there is something very important thing that i should take give you as a takeaway practice 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 so before you deliver, make sure you practice it as many times as you can so that you make sure that you're perfectly all right in delivering that. That's all. Thank you very, very much and have a wonderful, wonderful day, guys.